initiating moisture. The Boys is an Amazon show, brand new, and it's about superheroes, baby. And I'm totally fine with that. I know a lot of people like to pretend that they're above superhero movies. Oh, such juvenile enjoyment for simpletons. I would never sully my exquisite palate with superhero movies. Oh, disgusting. But then they still sneak out of the house late at night to go see the superhero movie to get their fix, scratching at their neck like a meth addict. Because they're well-made movies and superhero movies are good fun. Unless they're DC movies, then most of the time they're super shitty and you'd have more fun doing anything else. But aside from that, superhero movies are just generally enjoyable. And this show tries to take it in a different direction, albeit it's still not even like an original spin on the superhero genre. It's, what if the superheroes were assholes? What if they weren't infallible good guys? It's a realistic look at what would happen if superheroes existed in our world. And while it's not original in attempting that, it's definitely the best at its execution. It's really, really well done. And definitely the most realistic look at what would happen. The superheroes are egotistical humans. They've been told their whole lives that they're gods and goddesses. It's highly marketed. They're backed by a mega corporation Vought. Every move they make is calculated. They're there to make money. They are celebrities, icons. And that's kind of it. They're big, corrupt assholes, though, behind the scenes. And then a group of boys get together after a traumatic event, and they all try and hunt and take down superheroes to expose them for what they really are, assholes. And also brutally murder them, just fucking fist them as hard as they can. And it's really just so well done. I enjoy it start to finish. At first, I thought it was just going to be like a dark comedy with edginess here, you know, oh... Here comes some one-liners, blood gore for the sake of blood and gore, shock for the sake of shock. And there's even a scene with like a failed dolphin rescue that just really kind of screamed edgy for the sake of edgy. But as the show keeps developing, all of this really works in its favor. And there's so much more to it than just edginess for the sake of edginess. All of it contributes to the overall the plot, the themes. It's just really fucking well done. I found myself caring about the majority of the characters. They're really well written in my opinion. I do think some of the dialogue kind of falls flat, like the dark comedy attempts. Carl Urban plays Billy Butcher in this show, who's kind of the leader of the group of boys. Kind of the mastermind, the brains behind all of it, the scrotum to the penis that is the boys. And... I do have to say, I think some of his lines are just kind of shit. It's like some of the things he says, I'm going to rip your hands off to shove them so far up your ass that you'll wave at me through your mouth. I think that kind of shit just screams like something he read on Tumblr. Not Carl Urban, obviously. I don't think he improv it, but the writers. It just looks like something would have read on Tumblr for like an incel getting upset about getting killed in a video game. So it doesn't always hit its mark when it comes to like intimidating badass dialogue, the kind of shit you'd expect a man who eats nails for breakfast and then chugs motor oil. It doesn't really always come across sound and solid because sometimes you get kind of embarrassing lines like that. But I'd say about eight times out of ten, you're always rooting for Carl Urban and waiting to hear the next intimidating line he drops to someone. And you love to see the way he handles business. A lot of it does boil down to just Carl Urban being great as Billy Butcher. He fucking kills it in this role. Probably my favorite role I've seen him in since Dread. Speaking of which, we need a Dread 2. Carl, if you're watching this, keep lobbying hard for Dread 2. I'm, I'm right behind you, man. I'll be sniffing your farts till the end of time to get Dread 2 out there. If you haven't seen Dread, check that shit out. Great movie. But anyway, uh, back to the boys. I really just love everything about it. Visually, it looks great. For a TV show with eight episodes, it's really well produced. I can tell they had a pretty decent budget for this. Because they they made this shit look really nice, in my opinion. The CG moments aren't corny like in a lot of shits. So I was kind of expecting to be like CW shit, where the Flash spins his arms and you get like little Microsoft Word fucking particle effects springing off of his fists. But here, the superpowers work really well, except A-Train sometimes. I thought that got a little goofy. But that might just be super speed. I think making super speed work in a movie is super hard, and the only one that succeeds is X-Men with Quicksilver. And the way they succeed is by just making everything else stop. So then he just moves at a normal pace. And I think that's a really clever way of handling it. Uh, but the X-Men movies are not very good. The modern ones, that's the only thing they really do right. Here, it does everything right, in my opinion. Occasional missing of the mark with dialogue and shit. Sometimes the decisions the characters make don't make sense. And especially towards the last couple of episodes, the decision making becomes really kind of fucking dumb. It suffers a little bit of anime syndrome in the last couple of episodes. Uh, what I mean by that is the anime cliche where a major character has a lot of information that they need to share with someone else or share with the group. 
and then for an explicable reason they decide not to just for the sake of progressing the plot and keeping tensions high you know the classic hey uh onisan why uh, why did you do this what's going on and then instead of saying why they did it and what's going on they just turn their back and say nothing nothing's going on even though if you just told them what was going on things could have resolved right then and there it's just i don't like that that's always frustrating to watch unfold and you're always kind of rooting for the character to please just say the fucking information so everyone's on the same page and we can go from there instead of having to work backwards like showing a math problem how you got to the conclusion i just don't like that it's just i feel like it's a little silly but it's not very frequent in the show uh, overall, I just find it to be super enjoyable. It shows you some uncomfortable shit. It shows you some brutal shit. It does get pretty dark. There's not always a happy ending, and I really enjoy that. As far as, you know, the dark, gritty take on superheroes goes, that's not new or original, but this does it the best by far. I enjoyed the boys start to finish. And I'd also like to say Homelander. Homelander in this show is basically the Superman, and he's pretty much the evil Superman, kind of what Injustice did, but 50 times better. Homelander in this show is fucking outstanding. A truly great character. Love every scene that Homelander's in. He just controls it. He just fucking grabs it by the tits and twists. He is really a great character. So plugging this shit into the moist meter, I'm giving the boys a fat 90%. I really recommend it. It's eight episodes, just really good fun. Uh, it's not like it's not gonna be some thought-provoking piece, you know, going to bed in cold sweats like man. That really spoke to my soul. But it's just so goddamn fun. And you really do root for the characters sometimes. And there's just a lot of fun shit. It shows you with good fights. Real bloody shit. Doesn't shy away from dark themes. It's just... It, it does edginess well. I don't like using that word edginess. But it really does describe the show in a decent fashion. It's really just fucking good though. I really enjoyed it. That's it. See ya.